There it is right there. Okay. Um, we're over at DIY Auto School today. We're doing a little live uh, lesson, live lesson Friday. And what we're going to learn today is we're going to learn about aftermarket body parts. We're going to hear the real story on the aftermarket situation. Let me uh, fix my camera. Okay, there we go. Hold on one second. I got this jerry rig operation here running my operation and i need to fix everything so the camera will stay in place so hold on one second and then we'll get going on our free i might say this is a free lesson you don't have to pay for it okay all right so we got our camera going how you doing out there um air grabber very hard to read the comments so if i don't read them that's why can you hear me out there let's get a thumbs up make sure the microphone's working we got tim we got uh texan guy how y'all doing uh we got marlin or is that Mar yeah, marlin julio what's up mailman okay okay we got good volume good what we're gonna to learn today is we're gonna learn about aftermarket body parts. Now, what we're looking at here, this is a 1955 Volkswagen Beetle. Uh, the guy lives in Las Vegas. If you're a follower of mine, you've already seen several videos of this. And I'm gonna go ahead and try to straighten that out. There we go, okay. All right, so I got my tripod working. Now, we got a lot of extensive body work on this and you can kind of see that in the picture. This is actually an authentic 100% original used hood that the owner purchased from a professional body man out in Indiana by the name of Jeff Woods. And I want to give Jeff Woods a thumbs up if he's watching this. Uh, excellent body man that he is, professional all the way, and builds very, very high-end um, show cars. He's actually working on a, I believe, a 1965 Nova and he's restoring that for himself. But anyway, so let's get back to the story. So he buys the hood. The owner buys the hood from our buddy Jeff. And I'm going to tell you right now, finding a hood like this, even with bodywork on it, is very, very hard and extreme. This is a factory original hood. And if you do find a hood for this car, uh, uh, original sheet metal hood from Germany, you're going to pay hundreds and thousands of dollars for it, all okay? right? So I don't know what he paid for this hood, but it turned out to be a really good hood. Now, I did do a lot of body work on it, and what you're looking at here, I want everybody to know, this is a skim coat. Before I did the body work, and you're gonna see that in the videos, uh, the video set of building this car, um, I took my dent pullers, I took my body hammers, and I finessed it before I did any body work. And this is actually a polyester uh, filler, a thin coat, just to level everything out. Now, we are going to go ahead and spray some super build on that uh, because this car's got to be extra clean due to the fact that it's going to be painted black. Now, I'm not too impressed with that situation, and I'm not too uppity uppity on it. And when I say that, and if the owner's watching this, uh, I don't want him to get me wrong. This is my opinion. I'm a straightforward fucking guy, and that's how I talk. I do not believe this car should be painted black. We got a lot of body work on this. It's going to take a lot of body work to get this in to the situation of painting it black. Now, I'm going to pick my camera up, and we're going to kind of do a little walk around um, I actually have the camera facing me right now instead of backwards. So we're going to go ahead and tighten that up. This is a live video, so we're not going to get, you know, edited, high-tech quality, Sammy Salami, straight out of Miami cocksucker videotaping going on here. This is my friend Pete style. So let's go ahead and bring that camera. And then I want to kind of show everybody. Now look at the roof on this thing. Okay, let me see what we can do. There we go. Uh, the roof on this was battered, tattered, hail damaged. I believe a tree actually fell on it right here in this area. Um, and you can kind of see the situation we got on that roof. It's very, very, very bad. That was a four-day bodywork job, just block sanding the roof on that car. All right. And then, of course, we got the hood. Um, and we've done the best we can do on that. 
so we'll have to let the Super Bill take over. Um, we're gonna do a, like, a little walk around to the car. Let's go ahead and you can see the body work's been done on this side here. We got the doors are out in the paint booth. Let's keep going. Uh, can we, I wanna get onto this lesson here of the day. Uh, here's our deck lid. Um, I believe this is, an original, this is the original deck lid from this car. This car actually has lead. The, uh, this has been crushed in, so somebody straightened that out and then leaded it up. But you can get an idea of the roof on there. And another thing I want to show you is, look at the swimming pool full of Bondo dust we're working in, okay? The ocean of Bondo dust. So you can see I've been busting my ass on this thing. And when I do body work, I hammer and dolly my body work out. I don't just feel dense in and go with it. So I have done extreme body work to this car before I added any Bondo whatsoever. But we're gonna get back up here now. Let's go back up to the front. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk, because this is very important for all you um, guys that are restoring cars. And we're gonna talk about this fender right here. What you are looking at, and I hope y'all are sitting down, what you're looking at is a brand new, this is brand new fender. Now, I don't know how much this fender cost, but I do recollect the conversation of me and the owner and the way that he explained these fenders, they're supposed to be the best high quality fender that you could buy for this Volkswagen. I mean, anybody that really cares about doing their car properly, find the best stuff they can. Now, I wanna tell you something. I want everybody to listen out there. When you are researching body parts, you're gonna come across all kinds of websites and they're gonna be the best website in the world. They're gonna have flashing lights over here and they're gonna have moving pictures over here and you're gonna think that you're in the movie theater watching a free movie because they pay so much money for these exotic websites to attract your eyeball to buy that fender. Now, I'm gonna brace my leg up, and here's a good example. I wanna show you this, okay? Can you see that right there? That is a brace, this is a knee brace that I bought online. Now, I'm gonna run through the story here because this is leading up to this fender, or should I say all four fenders. I contacted these people right here online. They had their high-tech, fancy website of all this, you know, younger generation people working out and, and hippity hoppity and jogging and, and oh, they're at the gym working, you know, and their address for the company was on Industrial Boulevard, California. It was in an industrial town, California, or something like that. Ironworks, California, on Industrial Boulevard. So the address stated they were in America. Now, these braces, let me go ahead and pull it up. All right, there it is right there. This typical brace, and it actually works pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. It was advertised on there, two for $30, free shipping. I go ahead and order these things, and I'm waiting for them to get here. I'm waiting for them to get here. They took my money. It's right here. I'm waiting for them to get here. I didn't get them for almost three months. In the meantime, by the time I ordered them and by the time I contacted this company, I found out that these people are in China. They are using American addresses to drag you in to buy that product that is made in China. Now, we really can't bitch and complain about made in China. I mean, you know, the transition is over. It's a done deal. All right, so if it's made in China, that's fine. But when you get on these websites and you trust the website, you're thinking, I'll get this thing in a couple days. My knee is killing me. It's bone to bone. But then on the other hand, they're shipping that free shipping that says free shipping. They're, if you want free shipping, it's 
coming from China, not from California. That's their excuse. So I holler and scream at him, told him, I'm making videos. I'm putting it on YouTube, blah, blah, blah. They end up refunding my money and still shipping these things to me. So there's the little story about websites. If you see a fancy website and you can get on my website, my website ain't fancy. I got pictures on my website of cars that I'm building. That's it, okay? Um, I mean, it's old school. It's from the late 90s, early 2000s, but it gets the message across. So when you get on these websites and you're researching and you're all excited because you want that bug looking like a concourse restoration, you want it done right, naturally, you're going to go with the website that is the most exotic and best thing in the world. No, you're not. Because you're going to get that in your ass. Plain and simple. This is my motto about buying stuff on the internet. If you buy something on the internet, stay away from these high-end, fancy, flashing lights, uh, best-in-the-world bullshit websites. When you see that type of stuff, it's used automobile car lot action going on. It's real estate realtor action going on. They only want your money, and after they get your money, fuck you. The owner bought these online. I don't know where he got them. They were in green primer. He stated that the company that makes these fenders is the best company in the world. They are German thickness material or whatever was going on. And, and these are the fenders to get. I rubbed my hand across it like that. And I said, well, I hate to tell you, buddy, those fenders need body work. He was shocked. He was shocked. Is there anybody out there that um, has ever done paint and body to aftermarket Harley Davidson motorcycle tanks? Now, Harley Davidson's have dual tanks, one on each side. When you buy these brand new aftermarket ones for when I was doing it, it was like 250 bucks for a set. You would get those things in bare metal. They were in plastic and they were saturated with oil. And I'm sure they came from Taiwan or Vietnam or wherever they came from. But when you got them, you better have at least two gallons of Bondo because you're going to be doing this to it. You're going to be doing body work and the whole thing's going to be solid Bondo by the time you get done because that's how the aftermarket Harley tanks are. I told the owner, I said, I don't give a shit how much you paid for these things. I don't care where they're made. I don't care who made them. I'm going to have to do body work to this fucking fender. The point I'm trying to get across here, people, is aftermarket body parts suck. There is companies out there that are better than other companies. And in a way, and in a sense, I kind of agree with this guy that this is probably the best there is out there. I have worked with aftermarket Volkswagen fenders in the past from Empy, for instance, and the metal is very thin. And to actually use that fender, you got to skim bottom from one end to the other. It kind of looks like the hood up here. But don't be fooled because people are telling you our fenders are better than anybody else in the world. And we got the, we got the, we're the only company in the world that's got the factory stamps. These are stamped from the original stamps that Volkswagen used and all this other mal malarkey bullshit. So what I'm going to do today, now that we're past that, I'm going to show you situations when you buy aftermarket parts that arises. You see, I got a slap hammer here. Here's another situation. I'm going to go ahead and get this. Hang on one second. Okay, what we got here, this is a common body hammer. This is a hammer that a lot of you guys that are trying to do this or possibly want to, this is the kind of hammer that you're going to buy. You're going to buy a typical body hammer such as this one, not this particular one, but something like it, and you're going to get yourself a couple little hand dollars and you're going to start 
hammer and dolling and getting it out. Well, let me tell you what happens if you don't know what you're doing with this hammer. When you put that dolly under the fender like this, let's pretend this is our hand up, and you got that right here, and you are hammering, okay? What you are doing, you are stretching that metal out. You're stretching the metal out. Because if you do it too much, then all of a sudden now you got a dent. So what do I got to do now? Now I got to take my hammer and I got to reach up in here. And every time that you hit that, that metal is stretching. So using this hammer takes a lot, a lot of practice. Using a dolly and this type of hammer, if you don't know what you're doing, you're gonna make more issues and more problems than you are not using it. So what I'm gonna suggest is if you're starting out in this business, get yourself a set of hammers and I'm gonna do a review. Harbor Freight actually sells a body shop hammer kit and dollies and I'm gonna go ahead and buy one of those so I can do a review on it to really see what they're about. And if they're good action, I suggest that's where you start if you're a beginner. So I'm gonna put this hammer back because we're not using it. And then we're gonna go ahead and talk about this right here. Now I want everybody to look at this and hang on a second. Okay, I'm sorry, I had to get different ones out to show you. This one here I actually made. This is a homemade one that I made and it works very, very well. Um, I need to finish it out, I don't have time. And what I wanna do is I wanna get me a, like a bicycle grip possibly to put on here or get some of that rubber. Have you ever seen that dip, that uh, rubber handle dip and you dip it in and you let it dry and then it becomes rubber. And then I want to weld a washer on here where I can put my finger like that to kind of help me guide my slap hammer. So I made this one and it works very well. And then this one here, this is, a, I purchased this and this is for like sheet metal. This is a spoon hammer, all right? And I got two of these. I got one that's got more of a curve than the other. But the one that I always go to, my go-to slap hammer is this one right here. I bought this off Snap-on probably 25 years ago. It's a blueprint brand. You can see that right there, okay? And I use the shit out of this thing, all right? And I'm gonna show you how we're gonna use that, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and put these ones up right here. And then we're also gonna get this old antique rubber block. People think, oh my God, you can't use that. You can't do that. Let me explain something to you real quick here because we're going we're gonna to get into a lot of different stuff. Um, this block I probably had for 40 years, okay? This is an old school block. You can see that it's made for, all right, back in the day before they had sticky paper, you had to take your paper and then you squeeze it down, okay? I want to show you something. I want everybody to listen. Okay, right now, as we talk today, this is the most popular block sanding block that you can purchase right here, DuraBlock. You get this little set of blocks. They're six-piece DuraBlock kit. Um, they advertise it as the best block kit you can get, and I'm sure a lot of you out there probably have it. I have a couple of my blocks out. I'm using them right now, but I'm gonna tell you, these are not for automobile restoration. The Dura blocks are not for restoring an antique classic car. These are designed for collision repair. Now you can use these to break it down, but as far as a finished block, no, this is not a finished block. This is specifically designed for breaking down, breaking it down, and for brand new collision repair jobs. And the reason I'm saying that is because these are made out of rubber. These are not 
a hard, solid surface. So when you're sanding this metal, this Bondo, that rubber is either riding on top of it or it's pushing it down. And it's gonna make your surface do this. So I want everybody to understand that this is not the type of block system you wanna use on this. Now hang on one second. Now here's another block that I want to show you. And this one here is a pretty good size. This is probably the biggest one. Now this block here, it's made by a company called AES, okay? And what this block does is it's got the rods in here that you can take out, put them in, take them out. And it either stiffens it or it loosens it. Now the good thing about this block is that it's got a metal, solid metal surface on it. And you can make this a flex block as well. So I got all the rods in it and you can see that I'm pulling pretty hard. So if I take all the rods out, let me go ahead and do that. So we got all the rods out of it now. Now watch what happens. Do you see that? Okay, so now I can really stretch it, okay, and use it. The thing I don't like about this block is it's, it's, it's a soft handle block. Even though it's got a metal surface here, it's soft handle, so when I'm using it, I'm not getting a, I don't feel like I'm getting a good sand job out of it, if that makes any sense. Um, now, the owner of this Volkswagen, believe it or not, he actually had these in his car, and he said, my friend Pete, go ahead and keep them. So I will keep these, and I will use them, and I'll put them in my uh drawer over here. Will I use them a lot? I don't know. I'm going to show you the blocks that I use restoring cars real quick right here. And if you look at this block here, this is a Hutchins. They call them a speed file. All right. This is my go-to block on stuff like this. And I want to show you that this flexes, okay? This is a very flexible, and it also has rubber on it, but it's a hard surface. So we're gonna get a good sand with that. Another block that I go to is this little son of a bitch right here. All right? It's a nice hard surface. You see what I'm saying? Now, of course, on these round surfaces, of course, we're gonna be using different type of blocks um, for our finish work, but we're still gonna use this block for our rough end, okay? And a lot of this work that you see going on is by hand. We don't have, we're, the only air tool we're gonna use is we're gonna use a DA sander to break it down and then we're gonna do hand sanding from there. If you use air tools on all the body work going on here, what's gonna happen is you're gonna be continuously adding body work. You'll never, you'll never get it right. You have to learn how to use it by hand. So. I've done a lot of bullshit talking here and a lot of explaining. Let's get on to the fender action because that's what this is all about. All right, I'm back. So um, I talked to the owner. I'm sorry, I need to get my other tool here. Here's a little tech tip for you. Instead of blowing everything off and filling your shop with dust, Get yourself a dust broom and look at there, look at that. I don't have dust in the air, nobody's bothering me. Um, I got my mask I'm not wearing right now, so I don't need it. Do you see what I'm saying? So this is better to use than your air blower to clean it off as you're working on it. So I got my rubber block here for roughing in my body work. And then I also got this hammer here. And what this hammer's for is when I rub my hand across this fender, I got a curve that's going this way and I got a curve that's going this way. I've already put some filler in this area here because it felt lumpy. This had a dip in it and then over here, it was kind of wavy as well. But if we look right here in this area right there, I don't know, can you see that right there? Let me pull that camera closer. Let's get that camera right there because we're going to focus 
on this little section. If you look right here, you can see there's like a dark mark and it's darker than everything else around it. That means that that is a low spot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our hand and we're gonna feel that. And it has, right here, it's, it doesn't have a good roll like it would right here, all right? It has more of a, a sharp edge. And this is where this hammer here comes in handy. And I'm gonna show you, if you know how to use this, this is called a spoon hammer, okay? What we're gonna do is we are going to hit it like this and drag it, okay? You see what I'm doing? We're gonna hit and drag at the same time. Now this is some very thick metal. If you're working on a newer car that's got very thin metal, you need to learn how to compensate and use the spoon hammer properly. So we're gonna take our spoon hammer and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit it and roll it because I want to roll this edge. Especially in this area here, we got a very low spot here. Before I add any type of filler, I want to do the best body work I can to this fender so it's got the least bondo in it. So I'm going to take my slap hammer and kind of see how I'm holding it here. And we'll go ahead and hold it like this. This would be like for a flat surface. Okay. You see what I'm doing there? Do you see how my hand is? All right. But since we're rolling this right here, I want to hold it like this. So I'm going to roll that. And when I hit it, I'm going to sling it down just like that. Okay. And we're trying to eliminate most of this low spot because there's a high spot right here. And this is how you read your road maps. If you got real shiny metal, that's a high spot. If you got black primer or whatever you're using, that's a low spot. And if you got an area that has brushed, it looks like brushed aluminum, that's normal. So it's showing me right here, this is a high spot, that's a low spot. So what I want to do is I'm going to hit it and drag it, hit it and drag it. Okay, and we're going to try to eliminate this and more than likely what will happen, this will go down and it'll pop that dent out. That's what we're trying to do here. Okay, you can't see that, but I can feel that. And I can tell you this, that low spot is almost gone. And I'm gonna prove it to you here in a minute. All right, so I'll take my hammer again, and I'm gonna do the same thing. Now we got a little bit of a high spot right here, but this is still low. Okay, you know what I just did? I just rolled that fender and I can feel, just by feeling that, there's a little bit of a high spot here and that's because we got that body work. I'm gonna take my block. And by hammering it with my spoon hammer, do you see what's happening? I'm eliminating the body work. So there's a little bit of a ridge right here. Now that's like almost perfect. I'm gonna take my sanding block and I want, to, I want to show you this. Now I didn't have a dolly behind here, you saw that. All I was using was my spoon hammer. Let me bring the camera closer and I want to show you. Remember that was a high spot, which is right here. Now I'm gonna take this sanding block here and I'm gonna want, I want to show you what happens. You can see that the black primer is going away. Do you see that? So now all we got, we got a very, very minor little imperfection left. That's it. And if I take my slide hand, um, my spoon hammer, all right, and 
And then we go ahead and block it again. All we got left is a very, very minor. We can probably take some polyester primer and prime this because I'm going to have to do that anyway. And I guarantee you, it will fill these little sections in. I'm going to tell you people right now, and I want everybody to listen here. Okay, what you see me do, of course, I've been doing this for a long time, and I make it look easy like you're going to say. But if you practice and you use the right tools for the right job, whether you buy an aftermarket fender or a factory fender, you're gonna get that fender to work. Now, this fender is gonna need more body work. There's actually a dent right up here. So what we're gonna do is, I'm trying to get this to flow out. This is gonna be a black car. We've already bought the paint, there's no way out of it. So I'm trying to get all this to flow out. And if we go over there to look at that fender, it's going to be the exact same thing. There's a dent in the same spot. I don't know what it is. Okay. And I've already used my hammer. When you're working with something like this, you don't want to use a dolly. You want to use just the hammer only. And the reason for that is because when you start using the dolly and you've got your dolly underneath and you're taking your hammer and you're hitting that metal like that. Do you see what I'm doing here? I'm fucking... Okay, I want to get that dent out, bitch. It's too high. What you're doing is you are smashing that metal between two surfaces and you are stretching it out. You're mushrooming it. And then all of a sudden, now you got, like I said earlier, you got a dent. So now I got to put my dolly here and I got to hit it like this. Now hitting it like that. Now what happens is the metal isn't just a dent. Now you have stretched it so much, it's tin canning. You can take your finger and you push in on it, it goes pop, 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 pop. Kind of like a bowl of Rice Krispies, snap, crackle, pop. You see what I mean? So you got to learn how to use the hammer for the right project that you are doing. Do you see this hammer here? There's times that I use this hammer because this is the hammer that works for the job that I'm doing. So if you see somebody using this and they're professional, there's a reason for it. All right? Sometimes I use this side of that hammer. You see what I mean? That doesn't mean I'm hitting it like this. I'm using it and dragging it to my benefit. Um, one more thing good about this hammer, it fits in your pocket and you can carry it around with you. So before we go over to the Bondo table, like I said, this is live. Let me go ahead and get this prepped up because we're getting ready to mix some, um, we're going to call it body filler today because, you know, I'm old school and I call it Bondo. And if I say Bondo, you know, people say I'm a fucking hack because I said Bondo instead of fucking body filler. So, yeah. Um, we got this rolled around, that feels nice. I eliminated a lot of the uh, body filler here and we still got a minor dent right here. Now, I do feel right here and I can actually see it and let me show that to you. We're gonna try to get over here. Let's get our camera up in the air. Okay. Um, I think you can see that right there where I'm working. Okay, there's a high spot right here. So if I go ahead and put my body filler on here, there's still going to be a little high spot. I'm going to have to fill it up. So what I'll do, I'm going to take my slide hammer. Now, do you see how I'm holding it on this one? And a lot of times when you use a spoon hammer, if you use it properly, the dent next to it from getting rid of that high spot, the dent actually pulls itself out.
So it didn't pull it out, but we got rid of the high spot that we wanted to eliminate. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna go over to the Bondo table. I'm sorry, body filler table. We're gonna mix up some body filler, my friend Pete style, and I'm gonna show you what I would do on this to get this in gear and to make it work for us on the aftermarket fucking fender. That's the best thing in the world. Okay, we're over here at the Bondo table now. I want everybody to pay attention to what I'm going to tell you. It's very important. You're looking at Bondo spreaders here, people. You're looking at Bondo spreaders. This is Bondo spreader. Okay. I'm going to make a detailed video, and I want you to make sure that you watch out for this, on what Bondo spreader to use on what application. Did you just hear what I said? Different Bondo spreaders are made for different applications. We're not going to go through it right now, but you can kind of get an idea of the difference in these by looking at them. Okay, so we're not going to go ahead and do that today, but I want to make it very clear to everybody that if you want to do precise body work, especially in the collision world where you're getting paid flag hours and all this other shit, it's very important to know which Bondo spreader to use for which application. All right. And today we're going to use this Bondo spreader right here on the application that we're doing. And I'm going to tell you why. Let me go ahead and clean that off. I want to get that clean so we can use it. And another tech tip is you should always feel the edge of your Bondo spreader. And if it feels like it might be a little rough, take a piece of 80 grit and just do that with it. And that'll clean it right up. The reason we're using this Bondo spreader is because this is a thin Bondo spreader and it's very flexible. Do you see how flexible that is? I can use it like this. If I got a low spot, I can cup it and put a, a, a high ridge in it. Um, if I want it flat, I can hold it like this and then take both hands and just lightly go over it like a paintbrush. So this is what we're using because we're working on a round surface today. Um, like I said, to figure out what we're talking about on Bondo spreaders, you're going to have to hit that other video that I'm going to make on it. But uh, what we're going to do, I'm going to show you what I would mix up in a situation like I'm doing. So the first coat of Bondo that I put on that that you saw, that was just straight Bondo, nothing else. Uh, and it was just Bondo and hardener. So what we're going to do is we're going to dig deep down into our almost empty can of Bondo. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is not a $75 can of Bondo here that we're working with. Okay, this is not overpriced, over-exaggerated over bullshit Bondo that you would buy in a can and pay $50 for because they say it's good. All right. This is actually, I'll tell you what I use, and I've been using this ever since I was 14 years old, is Dynatron. This is Dynatron Band Dyna Light Bondo. This stuff costs, I'm going to tell you, it costs $13 a gallon. And I buy it by the case, and that's all I fucking use. And if you think I'm an idiot, then get the fuck out of here. You don't need to watch, okay? But what I do use that's made by Evercoat is this product here, okay? And we want to mix our Bondo up or our body fill. We want to mix it up so when we put it down, it flows out. It'll flat. It doesn't stay like this, okay? This is filler. This is for filler Bondo. This is not a finish action here. Plus, another thing is it's like 50 degrees outside. So we're going to go ahead and take our spreader, and we're going to go ahead and kind of cup it up a little bit make a little cup, and I'm going to show you why. Uh, first, we'll add our hardener. And when you add your hardener, you pretty much got to kind of figure out and calculate how much do I need. That's kind of a hit and miss situation until you know how to do it. Then I'm going to take my honey, and guess what I'm doing here, guys? I'm actually making the $50 gallon Bondo right here. This is it. This is how it's done. The only thing the factory does is add more honey to it to make it more creamier and smooth for you to lay down. That's it. I believe this bottle of honey is like 12 bucks. 
And it actually, that's enough Bondo for a case of, I mean, that's enough honey for a case of Bondo. Four gallons. So now when you see me mix it up, looky here. Do you see that? And that's what we want, okay? We want that Bondo to be nice and creamy. Look at that. That's almost the equivalence of this stuff here that you're paying $50 for a bottle of, all right? So let's get back to the car and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with that. I'll be right back. I gotta put this over there first. Uh, yeah, it's over here, sir. Yeah, it's a nice car, buddy. Okay, we got uh, we got some minis in the other room working. Um, she's the U-Haul person out here, so we got somebody walking around. Okay, so let's get back to work here. Yeah, okay, here we go. Okay, so we got our fender, and what I'm going to do... Okay, is I am going to take that mixture that I just mixed up. And I didn't put a lot of hardener in this due to the fact that I'm kind of, I'm trying to show you how to do this. <laughs> so it will last a little longer, there we go. So we went ahead and hammered out that aftermarket fender. We've done what we had to do. Now what we want to do is we want to smooth all that out. So when we paint that baby black, it's going to be as smooth as a baby's ass. So we're going to take our filler and look how nice that goes on i'm not pushing hard on my okay do you see there but what this one is doing is this is molding to the fender because it's a flexible look at that all right do you see how that's happening it's like baby's butter okay it's like buying a stick of butter at the grocery store and putting it on your bread that you just made toast out of. Look how nice that looks. Okay, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna do that, all right? Did you see how I did that? Now what I'm gonna do is look what I'm doing with that flexible Bondo spreader. I am going to flex it so I can get a good, you see there? And might as well go ahead and fill in some scratches here. And then we're gonna go around this corner here like this And what we're gonna do is we are just gonna go ahead and mold all that. And you can see by the filler that I'm putting on it that I got rid and eliminated a lot of damage just by using my spoon hammer. We got a little piece of Moab sand right there. Let's get that out of there. So we're gonna go like this. And that really came out nice. Do you see how that lays down though? By using the honey, once you uh, apply your filler, it pretty much molds itself to where it needs to go. And then we just lightly do that. This was our, this was our core. This was, the, this was the big daddy right here. So we wanna kind of look at the light. I got lights behind me and we wanna follow that light kind of like it would be a dentless, uh, I mean, a paintless dent repair, and we want to make sure that that's flowing out good. I'm going to go ahead and put just a little more right here. If you feather out all the edges, that's another important situation. The edges of your bodywork have to be feathered out. So we'll take our extra Bondo, and of course, we're gonna get our numb nut uh, haters out there that says don't ever use cardboard. Um, well, fuck off, that's all I've ever used uh, since I've been doing this. So I don't see any issues with it. So we're gonna spread that out and then we'll put this back on the Bondo table for further use, just like that. I'll be right back. Okay, so what we've just witnessed is basically the procedure of what it takes to work on aftermarket body parts that we're told to you are the best in the world. 
believe it or not, this is the best in the world. This is the best fender in the world that you can get. And this is what you got to do to it to make it work. Now, one more thing that the owner told me is that he called them up and they put uh, epoxy primer on their parts, just like anybody else in the world does. And it was a green primer. And he specifically told me that they told him, before you use our fenders, you need to take that green primer off. I have never in my life ever taken the factory primer off of any aftermarket body part in my life to restore it. I've never even heard of that. I told the owner that and he said, well, if you don't think it needs to be done, then don't do it. Well, I went ahead and had it done because in a situation like this, if the owner wants it done, it'll always be in the back of his head that the primer wasn't uh, removed and, and, and that could be fucking up my paint job. I don't know, you know, it's just one of them deals. So we're gonna let that dry. Once that's gonna be dry, now I gotta wait about 30 minutes and we're not gonna stay here stroking it, you know, for 30 minutes, but I'm gonna let that dry. And then once I do that, I will take my rubber block. I don't know where I put that rubber block. It's around here somewhere. And I will block that out using 36 grit. And the only reason I'm using 36 grit is to break it down. Once it's broke down and I get that glaze of it, then I will transfer into 80 grit. So if we come down here, we can see the bottom of this fender and you can see where I've already done the body work here, kind of like this. And so pretend that this is this and we've already taken it down 36. So the next thing that we're gonna do is and I always try to tell people, don't ever do this. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the hand situation on this. On a Volkswagen Bug, especially the fenders, a lot of the sanding that you're gonna do, I'm sorry, is gonna be with the palm of your hand, not your fingers. So if you ever have to sand anything with your hand, always try to stick to the palm and stay away from using your fingers. Do you see what I'm saying? Because if you use your fingers, Okay, what happens by the time you start doing all this and doing this, you're gonna get grooves in it and it's gonna be all screwed up. All right, so let me get a piece of 80 grit and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna finish that out. Now, another tool that you can use, and you'll have to make this, this is out of a packing box of an aftermarket body part. Um, this was a long strip, and I think it was glued to the inside of the hood or something. And then what I did is I took a piece and I made a flex block. And you can see this is very flexible. So I've had this for probably 15 years, 20 years. And it's one of my go-to blocks for stuff like this. But yeah, I wanna show you the hand situation. If you're gonna do it with your hand, use your palm Okay, you don't want to use your fingers and you just want to take your palm like this. All right, you see how I'm doing that? And I want everybody else to know I always wear a mask no matter what. The only reason I'm not wearing a mask right now is because I'm talking to you, okay? So remember that, it's very important to wear this. I'm not doing a lot of work here and I'm talking to you at the same time, so that's why I'm not wearing it. But I always wear a mask and that's very, very important. That's probably why uh, I'm still surviving and my health is in good condition because I am very, very um, strict on safety precautions to save your ass. So what I just did, and you, now look at that, that feels perfect. Okay, I got a little rough spot right here, so I'm gonna take my hand and I'm just gonna do that. All right. And this is primer ready, people. This is 2K primer ready, that's it, it's done. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat my process on that, but I'm gonna use not this block to do that. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do.
Okay, I'm sorry. I had to change the paper on my sander. This is an old antique block. This is a, uh, a 3M. This block is made by 3M. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze by you here. Excuse me. Excuse me, please. Thank you. All right. And then I'm going to come over here. Now, remember, this is an aftermarket fender we're working with here. This is not a brand new factory OEM fender. I want to let everybody know. So I'll go ahead. And then I'm going to take my hand. I'm going to feel that. And that feels really, really nice. Okay, so that's done. That's primer ready. So let's get our camera back up here now. So you kind of see the situation when it comes to aftermarket parts. We're going to look at another aftermarket part over here that goes to a totally different vehicle. But I wanted to take you through the process of what it takes to literally use an aftermarket body part. Now, once again, they claim, whoever the fuck they are, this is the best fender that you can buy for this car. This is the best one in the world. This is it. And you see what I have to do to make this best fender in the world actually work for this car. Let's go look at another project that I'm working on. We're going to look at a complete quarter panel on this thing, and we're going to see what's going on with that. And I hope everybody enjoys this long, exhausting video uh, I believe it's a little bit too long, but to really get the message across, I mean, you know, we got to make it where you understand the situation and this is what it takes, okay? I should be actually working, but I'd like to take my time out to help everybody out there and to understand. I get a lot of emails and a lot of phone calls from people that are frustrated and upset and they're lost. So I try to answer as many questions as I can on my videos as possible to help you out. But I want everybody to look at this. Now, what we got here, this is an aftermarket uh, quarter panel for a 68 Mustang. Now, this is an R-code Mustang, I believe. It's a big block job. And this is a car that we've had here for several years working on it. It's a 68 Fastback. And I'm in the process of replacing full quarter panels on this and tubbed out uh, mini tub uh, fender wells. So you can see all of the sheet metal I had to take out of this. And then of course, we're gonna be putting it back on, but here's a situation um, with a company called Dynacorn. I'm gonna go ahead and say their name, Dynacorn. Dynacorn is one of the biggest manufacturers and they don't even manufacture them. They're made in Taiwan at some factory of Mustang parts. Now, I bought some Dynacorn fenders for this, and they did not fit worth the shit. I ended up throwing them in the trash. You're going to see that in the video. But I went and bought another hood that was not Dynacorn. Now, there's two factories in Taiwan that make aftermarket Mustang parts. Um, so I bought the other hood. Now, this hood actually fits pretty good. A little bit of modification, but we got it to fit. But as far as Dynacorn shit goes, it's pretty much junk. This is from a company called Gold Star. All right. Now you see the finish on this. This is etched, but it's got, um, it's a silver etching, but it's not primed so you can weld it. Okay. Which I think is a bunch of bullshit. I would rather have the black primer. That way it's primed um, top and bottom where this isn't. You can see. So that's, to me, that's a cheapskate way out for them to save money but whatever, I don't give a shit. So that's another situation. Now we haven't put this on here and I might come back with a part two when I go to fit that on there to make and see if that actually fits good. I do know that different brands, and like I said, there's two companies that make this and the stuff that Dynacorn gets theirs from are junk, but the other company is actually pretty reputable. Um, so there you go. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. And we're working on aftermarket fenders. There's a fender right there. This one here is pretty much primer ready. Um, I'll go over it one more time just to double check, but that's your aftermarket high-end expensive fender action right there. And that's basically what you're going to have to do to it 
to make your aftermarket parts work. We'll see you later. Take it easy. Let me get this down here. Okay. We'll see you later. Take it easy. And um, if you are in a situation that says you're depressed or you're anguished or you just don't know how to cope with life, find yourself something to do. Keep yourself busy. Get your mind off of the situation at hand and do something, whether it's sanding Bondo or it's um, riding a bicycle. Do something in life that will get your mind off of your depression and, and things will be better. I got to get back to work. Take it easy, guys, and we'll see you later. That's all I can tell you. We'll see you later.